Well, good morning, everybody. I'm glad that you came up today. In my, chill, in my sermon, I'm going to be talking about Easter. You know that Easter is so big and so important, we can't just celebrate it on just one day a year. In fact, Martin Luther used to say, the founder of the Lutheran Church said, that every Sunday is like a little Easter. But also in my sermon today, I'm going to talk about movies. Do you like to watch movies? Oh, you do? Okay, you've been to Easter. Go ahead. That's even better. Have you? Oh, you have too. Okay. Um, in watching movies, I know they're a little bit longer. They kind of have to hold your attention for a while. But I remember taking my twins when they were five years old to see a movie. And they got to go see a Disney movie named Lilo and Stitch. And in that movie, uh, there's a part of the movie where one of the characters gets taken and I'm probably going to get in trouble for saying this, but I remember my son, when he was five years old, he said, I, I want to leave. I, I don't want to stay. Because he was scared. Have you ever been scared in a movie? And just thought, you know what, I'm going to walk out right now. But I, I had told him that I knew the ending of the movie, and it turns out just fine. But he didn't want to believe me. He wanted to go. And I said, wait a minute, we're paying full price to stay to this movie. We're going to stay at this movie. Well, anyway, he did stay. And guess what? There was a happy ending. Think about what happened with Jesus. Jesus died on a cross. I mean, he was dead. And the disciples thought, oh, no, it's over. But yet three days later, something happened. This isn't a movie. This is real life. What happened three days after Jesus died? He rose again. Doesn't that give us reason to rejoice that we don't have a dead Savior but a living Savior? And now we're going to be hearing about a sequel, about a, a sequel is something that happens afterwards, and we're going to hear that Jesus is alive, and more and more people saw Jesus alive. So that's why you and I can believe that Jesus is alive today, because so many people saw him and God recorded all of that to help you and me. So let's thank God for all of those people who saw Jesus alive. Dear Jesus, thank you for giving us all of that proof that you are indeed alive, because that's what gives us peace, and that's what gives us hope. Bless us today as we celebrate Easter. Don't ever let us lose our Easter joy. Instead, let that Easter joy make a difference every day that you live to save us. Bless us and make us a blessing to others. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We're going to hear about the sequel, what happened after Jesus rose from the dead. The Bible records one of those appearances in John chapter 20, beginning at verse 19, the appointed reading for this third Sunday of Easter. The Bible says this, On the evening of the first day of the week, when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, that means twin, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my fingers where the nails were and put my hands into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. For the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands? Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God, then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not yet seen and yet have believed. 
Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. This is God's word, we pray. Lord Jesus, sanctify us by your truth. Your inspired word is truth. Amen. Please be seated. Dear sons and daughters of the risen King Jesus, back in college, I watched a lot of movies with my friends. A lot of movies. What kind of movies do you like to see? Well, we spent our Friday nights back in Northwestern College renting movies from the local video store. That's right, no streaming video. Think blockbuster video. I know we don't have those today, but yeah, that was back in the olden days when dinosaurs first roamed the earth. Well, when we would go and and rent those videos, uh, I bet some of you still have some of those VHS tapes down in Grandma's basement. Maybe it was because we lived in a small Wisconsin town. Maybe it was more because, well, None of us owned a car back then. We watched those same Hollywood movies over and over again so well that even today I could quote most of the lines from the movie. You do not want to play me in 1980 movies trivia. Trust me, I know what I'm talking about. And we watched all the classics, classics like Monty Python, Ghostbusters, Top Gun, the original one with both Maverick and Goose. We watched all of these movies, and I'll admit, I still remember making some great memories with my friends. They gave us a diversion and something to do, but that's about it. These movies really didn't change our lives. But one thing we did learn about watching these movies was this. If Hollywood had a box office smash on its hand, it was sure to repeat it. And here's what I mean. There wasn't just one Star Wars movie. There had to be made a Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi, six more movies along with countless spinoffs. There wasn't just a Back to the Future movie. There was a Back to the Future 2 and 3. There wasn't just a Rocky 1, 2, and 3, but 4, 5, what are we, Rocky 10 now? You get the picture. Sometimes as Christians, we hear the Easter account of Jesus lives so many times week after week. We know exactly what happened at Jesus' resurrection. and We can recreate the scene of that first Sunday morning. And maybe even some of you here can quote all of the lines too. But there, our celebration stops. Why is that? Just two weeks ago, our Easter celebration swelled just about 150 feet away back in the sanctuary with the music and message of, I know that my Redeemer lives. But since then, how is that? made your life any different. For most of us, our work schedules and school schedules, we've just gone back to our regularly scheduled lives. And my point is our Easter joy can so easily be lost. Jesus was concerned about that with his first century followers. Jesus knows the human heart, for remember, he has one too. Jesus knows about how Worries, anxieties, and doubts can fill the human heart. And in our case, he also knows how guilt can fill our human hearts. So Jesus did something about it. He gave us what we would call an Easter sequel. Yes, Jesus wanted to restore our Easter joy. His Easter sequel was a continuing reminder that Satan doesn't own us because he lives. 
his Easter sequel was a continuing reminder that sin and Satan, they, they don't ever have to tell us what to do. Why? Because Jesus lives. And it's a constant reminder that death, even though you and I need to face it, I've been to two funerals in the past week, and boy, does that hit home when you go to a funeral. We don't have to despair. Why? Because Jesus lives. Yes, this Easter victory that we share through Christ, the location may have changed somewhat for us this morning, but no one ever need to take away our Easter joy. So here's my Christian counsel. Don't let the devil take it from you. On this sequel Sunday, known in the church here as Easter 3, let's take a closer look at the words of John chapter 20, and I pray that you join me as we thank God for his Easter sequel. As we take a closer look at our sermon reading for today, we're first of all going to hear how Jesus gives us true Easter peace. But we're also going to hear how its sequel gives us lasting faith, more reasons to believe. Now, what do you expect out of a good movie sequel? You probably want an original story. You probably want a continuation about what happened next. And most people want a happy ending. Jesus gives us all that and more in his Easter sequel, much more. Is God really original in his plan to save us? Let's let God's word speak on and answer that question. We learned from 1 Corinthians chapter 2 how original God is. For the Bible says, What no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, what no human mind has conceived, the things prepared for those who love him, these are the things God has revealed to us by his spirit. In other words, Hollywood has unlimited resources at their disposal, and still they have nothing original compared to what God has done. And besides, Hollywood can only give you fantasy. God gives us reality. And the gospel writer John sums up why God saved his truth these 20 centuries. It was to help us. This is what the Bible says, and this is how our sermon reading ends. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. Talk about the ultimate happy ending for every man, woman, and child who believes. You know, the best part about God's Easter sequel, it's not just more proof that Jesus' tomb is empty, and so one day those Christian loved ones who've died in faith, even though they've died, their tomb is going to be empty too. It's not just more evidence that Jesus is telling the truth. He truly is the Son of God. He truly is the Savior of the world. The best part of Jesus' Easter sequel, it's for you. It's for me. And it's for all people that God still wants us to reach with the gospel. So let's thank God for his Easter sequel. It begins this way. On the evening of the first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After this, he showed them his hands and his side. In other words, proof of that peace. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord, and again Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. You know when all this took place, right? It was still Easter evening. Even though the disciples should have not even been in that room Remember, what did the angel tell the, the women at the tomb, what the disciples should do? They should go to Galilee. And is that where we find them? Nope. They were behind locked doors. Why? For fear. Fear of the Jews. See, the disciples reasoned that if the Jews weren't afraid to kill Jesus, <laughs> they would be next. So they were behind locked doors. 
they, let's be honest, they were confused. They were paralyzed. And now, Jesus just shows up. You could have heard a pin drop when Jesus was there. Kind of like right now. But Jesus knew exactly what they needed, what we needed, and Jesus was giving it to them. He said, peace be with you. Jesus wasn't offering any kind of earthly peace that's so short-term, but literally heavenly peace. Jesus was offering them the kind of peace that we sing about in our Christmas carols. Remember? Peace on earth and mercy mild. God and sinner reconciled. What Jesus came to prove to them is that he was giving them full and free forgiveness of every sin that they had ever committed. And that offer is still on the table for us today. What's the opposite of peace? It's war. Isn't that what we're seeing right now in real time over in the Middle East? But when you think about it, Satan lost the ultimate war. The war against us, the war with God. When Jesus died on that cross and when he rose again from the grave, the devil lost. And yet, do you ever notice the devil doesn't give up? He knows he's going to lose on judgment day. And yet, that doesn't stop him from tempting me. And it won't stop him from tempting you either. The devil tries to con us into thinking, you know that sin that you did? That you think that nobody else knows about? God can't possibly forgive that sin. Guilt of past sins can not only haunt us, they can literally ruin relationships and make us ineffective. Yes, we need rescuing from that kind of captivity of what we've done. And yet Jesus has come to give us that kind of peace. Maybe this will show you what I mean. One of my favorite movies is The Patriot. Ever see that before? That was set back in revolutionary times. Usually when we think about the American Revolution, we think of the Boston Tea Party, Betsy Ross, George Washington crossing the Delaware. But when I saw this movie, it helped me understand that freedom is not so free. The main character, played by Mel Gibson, he didn't just talk about peace and freedom. He had to earn it. He had to be willing to sacrifice his home, his family, his own personal safety. Yes, because not only because of him, but because of countless other Americans, you and I are free to worship God today. But that pales by comparison to the spiritual freedom and peace that Jesus has won for us. Jesus didn't just talk about peace in the Bible and talk about freedom. He did something about it. Jesus was willing to fight the battle against sin and Satan alone when Jesus died on the battlefield of the cross, shedding his blood to pay for our sins. Yes, Jesus was willing to go all out against Satan. He made us right with God by bringing peace between man and God and earning the forgiveness of sins. And now we see Jesus alive. More evidence that it's true. God had accepted that sacrifice. And now you and I can truly be at peace with God with knowing our sins forgiven. He is our conquering hero, our Savior and our King, all because... God's Easter sequel has brought us peace. Now, what's Hollywood's motivation for bringing us sequels? Well, they'll tell you they want to design more art, they want to entertain, but really it's about bringing boatloads of bucks for the cast, the director, and all of the promoters. What's God's motivation for bringing us Easter sequels, more appearances of Jesus? It's love. It's love for you and me. God cares about us so much, and he knows what doubts will arise, that Jesus wants to snuff out all of those doubts. Jesus didn't just give us an Academy Award performance in the Bible, although we sure would say that. All that really happened. All of that was for us. 
Yes, thank God for his Easter sequel. But let's talk about how it brings us more faith. Our reading continues. Now Thomas called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my fingers where the nails were and put my hands into the side, I will not believe it. Poor Thomas. You could say Thomas was from the state of Missouri, the show me state. He had to see proof with his own eyes. And the problem was that Thomas demanded proof on his own terms. See, Thomas had seen the evidence. He saw Jesus' body dead on a cross just three days before. And you can imagine how, along with Jesus' dead body, Thomas' hopes, his dreams, his faith in Jesus died. And now, Jesus is, well, Jesus rose again? How is this possible? Remember what I just said in the children's message? It's almost like Thomas walked out of the movie before it even ended. My friends, don't make that same mistake. The problems that you have right now, they may feel overwhelming or they will feel that way in the future. Don't walk out on Jesus. He's still active in your life, doing things you couldn't even possibly believe because he loves you. Our reading continues. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you, the third time he said it. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, see my hands. Reach out your hand into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God, how big do you feel if you're Thomas right now? You just said something that everybody else heard. And now Jesus walks up to you. How do you feel about this big? Whoops. Thomas got what he prayed for, another sequel. The following week, Jesus appeared to him in the flesh and gave him more proof that he was alive, gave him reason to believe. This time, Thomas didn't miss out. By God's Holy Spirit, he believed. But the final, ver final verses of our reading, my friends, are for you. This is what Jesus said. He was talking about you when he said, Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not yet seen and yet have believed. Yes, Jesus is talking about us. Why do I say that? Because none of us have seen Jesus in the flesh. I haven't, and you haven't either. We've never put our fingers into his hands where the nails were, or put our hands into his side where the spear was. But yet, we are blessed. Why? Because you and I simply believe. So why do you believe Jesus rose from the dead? Because the Bible tells us. And not just because of the Bible tells us, we have witness upon witness that proves to us beyond a shadow of a doubt, Jesus really did rise from the grave. Jesus is alive right now, ruling, taking care of you and me. That's why we trust him. My friends, we do well to guard that gift of faith that God has given us. We do well to keep feeding that faith, just like we're doing right now. So the next time you have a free Friday night, enjoy a good movie to God's glory, even if it is a sequel. But more importantly, thank God for his Easter sequel, this appearance of Jesus. This sequel gives us peace that's literally out of this world. This sequel gives us more reasons to believe, and that literally lifts us from the despair of hell to the heights of heaven. The only thing anybody can say to that is amen. For our stewardship thought today, I'd like you to think where you are here in the fellowship hall. And we're on chairs, I'll admit. It's not the most convenient, but I am thanking God for the air conditioning. It was really warm for service. Some of you may not know this. I was talking to some people before church. We're in here because our pews are getting refinished. 
And if you'd like to see a marvelous video, there's one on the St. Paul's Facebook site. It's awesome. It's a half-hour video. They get into a lot of detail about what they're doing to help us restore our pews. And very soon, we're going to get to go back um, to be able to go see it. But if you've ever wondered, what do your church offerings go to for projects exactly like this? To repair our church pews. And thank you for being generous. Thank you for helping us not only repair God's house, but the money that we give goes and doesn't even stay here. It goes to train future called workers just up at Martin Luther College or at Wisconsin Lutheran Seminary for missionaries here in our country and throughout the world. What's our motivation for giving? It's because we truly believe that Easter happened. And we believe that because of the appearances, because of the word of God. Yes, when we give, don't ever let this world hold you back. Why? Let's pray the final verse of this hymn. What is the world to me? My Jesus is my treasure, my life, my health, my wealth, my friend, my love, my pleasure, my joy, my crown, my all, my bliss eternally. Once more then I declare, what is the world to me? Amen.